This is the brand new Mercedes-Benz Vito. It started 2020 with an all new look thanks to a recent facelift, which some people have criticized as saying it's skin deep but I'm pleased to say that that is not the case. It may have a new look, but it has new engines, a new cabin, and new cabin features, which I'm really looking forward to showing you around. Anyway, no further ado. Let's crack it open and give the Mercedes-Benz Vito its very own Vanarama Road Test. Now, before we get started, I'd just like to say that I sincerely hope you enjoy this video, and if you do, don't forget to like it, subscribe to the channel, and click that bell to get notified whenever we post new content just like this. And if you are in the market for a brand new van car or pickup truck, don't forget to head to vanorama.com and check out the leasing deals. Now, let's start this review at the front, where we always do. Now, the more eagle-eyed of you will notice that this is absolutely the new facelift version. And one of the easiest ways to recognize that is that the Mercedes-Benz badge is now right in the middle of the grille, flanked by these three kind of, I don't know, kind of frill things. In the brochure, they call them louvres or louvres or something like that. It's a very classy way of saying chrome detailing or you know, black plastic kind of accentation. Also notice at the bottom, the grill now has this splitter, which looks super cool. It's absolutely razor sharp and helps this vehicle cut through the air. It's a really good looking front end, actually. I think that Mercedes have put in a lot of time and effort to make it look genuinely different from before. As I said, the badge is now in the middle, which I think gives it a really on point look. So there we go, that's the front. Let's sweep around the side and take a look what's going on there. So as I come around the side, I'm pretty sure the more eagle-eyed of you will have noticed that the Mercedes-Benz Vito has alloy wheels. I mean, what would a Mercedes-Benz medium van be without its alloys? Uh, well, absolutely, yeah, I can tell all of you are screaming that. It just wouldn't be classy enough, absolutely. Well, look, in the medium van sector, alloy wheels are something that you can absolutely have. It's when you start getting into the larger weight limits of things like the Mercedes-Benz Sprinter, the Ford Transit, that alloy wheels just don't make sense. But on a medium van like this, which is about a touch of class, alloy wheels are the way to go. Now, you'll have noticed as well, the side sliding door on the driver's side. There's also one on the passenger side as well, because this is the crew cab version. It's got a second row of seats, which I'll be showing you when we crack open the interior. But as you can see, the side of this vehicle is very easy to kind of project forward and think, right, what would it look like as a panel van? Well, just replace that black window with metal paneling and you know exactly what it's going to look like. A very classy side profile indeed, which is just crying out for you to stick your branding all over it. And there we go. It's a very nice profile for a very nice looking van. Right, well, now we're here, let's head around the back because the loading bay is somewhere where there are some really nice features. So here we are at the back, and you've no doubt noticed that this doesn't have 50-50 split on the doors, but that's not just because this is the crew cab version. The tailgate is actually an option on the Mercedes-Benz Vito across the range. Now look, in my opinion, there are two vans in the medium van sector that you could describe as premium, and that's the VW Transporter and the Mercedes-Benz Vito. Now on the VW Transporter, the tailgate is like kind of, it, it just goes with it. I mean, the VW Transporter and a tailgate go together like macaroni and cheese. If you're American, you might like it over here as well, but you know, that's absolutely you. Your, your food choices are your business. But anyway, the tailgate on the Mercedes-Benz Vito is I think one of the best on the market. Just watch this action. It just comes up really nice and smooth, opens up to its fullest extent. Those hydraulics really do work very nicely. And show you off the loading bay, which is very cool. Now look, this is the crew cab version, so you've got some kind of lining around the back here, and you've also got that second row of seats, which kind of shorten the loading bay down a little bit. But the full dimensions and the payload are whizzing around me right now, so that you get to have a look at how wide it is, how long it is, how high it is, what the payload's going to be, to basically make your mind up as to whether something like this would be the vehicle for you in the medium van sector. Now, the crew cab version is actually quite nicely lined in here. Now, usually you'd expect in a panel van to get panel lining, like just, you know, kind of wood panels, like the ply lining, like you normally get. But when you go for the crew cab version, it's almost like the interior of a minibus. It's really nice and really plush. Mercedes-Benz are good at interiors. They're also good at loading bays as well. So there we go. That is the loading bay of the Mercedes-Benz Vito. Now, I said that there were several areas of this vehicle that are really obvious in terms of where the facelift has affected the most. 
and the cabin is one of them. So let's get round there and get in there and show you what it's all about. But before we get to the cabin, I just want to point out the side sliding door. Now, because this is the crew cab version, you've got a sliding door on both sides, but when it's open, the aperture is the same and the size of the door is the same as well. Now, the only difference you're actually gonna notice in the panel van is that the bulkhead will naturally intrude into this opening. So the dimensions you're gonna see around me are for the panel van version and include the bulkhead intrusion. And that's it. It's a great side sliding door, and because this is the multi-person version, I'd just like to point out that it's got a step right here because it gives me an opportunity to do my awkward leg up thing that I like doing so much. Anyway, all done, sliding door shut. Let's get in the cabin and have a look at all the refinements in there. Oh. Oh. It's very cold outside, so I'm very pleased to be back inside the Mercedes-Benz Vito. Now, let's have a look around. It feels relatively similar to the previous version of the Mercedes-Benz Vito, but there have been some upgrades. Now, the upgrades actually come in the shape of the trim. So the fabric on the seat has been upgraded to a nice new looking fabric, which actually from this angle looks like it's shimmering with iridescence. And that is absolutely uh, an unaccidental partridge because I love using flowery terms to describe the interior of a van like this. Now, as you can see, there's no bench seat in this particular model. We've got a full passenger seat and we've got a full driving seat with an armrest up there as well. Let's just try it out, see how it, how it goes. Well, it doesn't ratchet in place or lock, but uh, it's perfectly nice. And actually it's got quite a lot of resistance on it. So, you know, it's not gonna go anywhere while you're driving and, you know, gangstering it around your local neighborhood. Now, interiors. It's where Mercedes-Benz cars absolutely live and die. And I've got to say that actually in the front of a commercial vehicle, you can forgive some of the more kind of plain, black, tough, durable plastics, because of course this is a commercial vehicle still. It's got to be tough, it's got to be durable. So that is why this material is everywhere. It's on the doors, it's on the dashboard, it's on the glove box, but it's also down here on the floor because this is the automatic version. Now, the 116 and up engines in the Mercedes-Benz Vito range come as automatic as standard. So there's no gear stick and you've actually got a lot of space in here, which allows you just to utilize that space just a little bit more efficiently. Okay, so a lovely steering wheel, no doubt taken from one of the Mercedes-Benz cars. It is absolutely lovely, I've got to say. It's one of the nicest steering wheels in the medium band sector at the moment. It's leather lined up here. It's got kind of grippy leather around the sides here, and it's got chrome detailing that comes up from the bottom and sweeps around to the top. I'm also really glad to see that they haven't decided to put one of the flat bottom steering wheels in it because I just don't think commercial vehicles look great with flat bottom steering wheels. I think they look much better when you've got a big full 360 circle. Now, as I said, this is automatic. So just behind your steering wheel here, you've got your paddles to shift gears up and down. And don't forget to notice all the controls on the right and the left. You've got your phone controls, your audio controls, your voice control function is over here on this right-hand side. And on the left-hand side, you've got your up, down, left, right arrow so that you can scroll through all the menus and systems here as well. You've got your stalks, which are nice. Again, this is automatic. So this one on the right here is your gear selector. So you can move it into drive, into park, into neutral. And on the side here, you've got your lights and your windscreen wipers. The dashboard instruments are actually really nice. Some of this chrome detailing from the steering wheel is here on your dashboard instruments. You've got your rev counter on the right hand side and you've got your speedo on the left. And both of them are circled by a kind of brushed aluminium kind of looking chromey kind of detail, which really makes them stand out. They're also extremely clear. In between those two dials is a driver information display, which shows you the usual stuff you'd expect to see on there, including some warning lights, although most of them are in these little apertures just above the speedos. You've also got things like range and uh, you know general kind of alerts that might flash up, you know, tire pressure warnings, that sort of stuff. It's very nice and very clear. Tracking along the dashboard, you come to the big infotainment system, which dominates pretty much half of this console in the center right here. Now look, I gotta be honest, this is probably one of the more basic infotainment systems that you're gonna see in a modern medium van. 
I mean, it doesn't really compete with anything the PSA group have got out at the moment. And Ford's Sync 3 and Sync 4 infotainment systems, I think pretty much leave it in the dust. However, it is perfectly functional and it does everything that they do, but just uses hard buttons instead. I mean, you've even got a full number pad here so that you can actually manually input numbers rather than having to use a touch screen or something, which actually some people are gonna find really useful and much easier to use than a touch screen, which sometimes doesn't offer the same resistance as a a proper classic button. You've got some standard stuff over here. You've got your radio functions, media functions. You can connect your phone up through Bluetooth or a, a direct uh, line in with an aux socket. You've got your phone settings, volume controls, and over here, your up, down, left, right arrows, which are just basic functions, you know, so you can scroll through menus. Below that screen, you've got, well, what have you got? One, two, three blank buttons but you've got your hazard light switch, you've got your auto start stop function, which you can turn on and off. You've got dynamic traction control settings and you can actually turn traction control off all together if that's what you want to do. But I would say, look, we're coming into the winter months at the moment, so I would definitely leave your traction control on. It's only if you're gonna go and do something absolutely harebrained that you'd wanna turn them off anyway. Uh, below that, you've got your climate controls, which I'm very pleased to say air conditioning is standard at this trim level. You've got your temperature on one side, you've got your fan speed on the other, and then you've got all your directional settings, including in the crew cab version, a rear window demister button as well. But of course, in the panel version, well, you're not gonna have a rear window, and if you do, I'd question why, because you can't see it through the bulkhead anyway. What's going on there? I'm not actually criticizing Mercedes for doing that because I don't think they ever have, but I'm just kind of saying, don't you know, go over the top with it anyway. Okay, so enough of that, let's get on to storage. Now I've got to say the Mercedes-Benz Vito does storage very well actually. Now the coffee cup holders may look a little bit poxy, but they will take a standard coffee cup from Nero, Starbucks, Costa, you know, any other coffee shop that I'm missing off the list. I'm very sorry, I just couldn't think of you right now. Uh, and, and they'll be absolutely fine. Nothing's gonna go anywhere. On top of the dashboard, you've actually got three cubby holes. You've got one in front of the driver right here, which is exactly the same size as the one in front of the passenger over here. And you've got one in the center. They need none of them, I think, and uh, none of them have a rubberized bottom, which means that anything you stick in there is gonna slide around, so make sure it's big enough. Um, I'm gonna use line bars as the universal form of measurement here. This one could probably take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten, as long as they're put in straight down like that, not on their sides, so ten along the side here. These, this one, you're gonna to have to lie them in, so that's one, two, three, four. I think you'd only wanna put four in there because they're all just gonna go everywhere and everything I said for the one in front of the driver is absolutely the same for the one in front of the passenger as well. You've got some little cubby holes either side of the climate control right here, which is uh, very, very nice. This one is completely open, but this one is where your USB socket and your aux in socket are hiding. So if you do want to hook up your phone or your device or your tablet or something like that, this is where you do it right here. Uh, door storage is actually really good. I, I was really surprised. When I got into this, I thought to myself, oh, it doesn't look too good, but there's a nice gap that's been almost specifically machined for a litre bottle of water to fit into, which you can just bam, straight in. And the, the size of the bin is actually really generous. You'll fit a sandwich, a paper, whatever you need to cram down there. It's really, really good. Final bit of storage just to mention is, of course, the glove box, which I'm pleased to say is full width from the side of the console all the way to the door. No kind of fuse box in the way or anything taking away all of your room. It's right there. It's nice and big. It's actually, yep, pretty deep. So there you go, the interior of the Mercedes-Benz Vito all in a nutshell. As you can see, there have been some refinements. The infotainment system might be something that makes you think twice, but I've got to say, as I said, it's very functional. It does everything that the other ones on the market do, but it's got a lot of hard buttons instead. And there we go. That is the cabin of the brand new Mercedes-Benz Vito. What do you say that while we're here, we power it up, we give it its road test. In my book, when a vehicle is facelifted, I feel they have to make meaningful changes. And in the Mercedes-Benz Vita, I'm glad to say that they have made some meaningful changes. If I can start with the cabin, it does feel just a little more refined. I mean, it's essentially basically the same. But the new fabrics and the new tough black plastic dashboards, I mean, they really go together to make this vehicle feel a little bit more up to date. The Vito is one of those vans that feels like it's been around for a while, and, it, and you know, to be fair, it has. 
But I think what's most clear to me is that they have spent a bit of time making some good updates. The steering wheel is one of the easiest places to spot that. I mean, they've obviously taken it from one of their very successful personal vehicles. One of their cars, no doubt a GLA or an E-Type or something like that. Something, one of their steering wheels has been taken off and put into the Vito. And actually, it makes all the difference. It's actually the kind of those little things, those little details like chrome beveling around the outside of the controls or a little bit of chrome on your light switches that just pull a van up from being a standard, very comfortable run-of-the-mill van interior to being a very nice plush van interior. It also benefits quite heavily from being the automatic version. Now on the 116 and up, that's the 116 engine and up, you get automatic as standard, which is a nine-speed automatic gearbox. Now, just behind the steering wheel, you've got some paddles, so you can paddle shift if you like. However, sometimes if you hold it in too low a gear, you can affect fuel efficiency. So it's worth just letting the gearbox do its job. It does a very good job as well, actually. It doesn't take too long to decide whether to flip up and down, uh, depending on the power that your vehicle suddenly starts to ask for. And in fact, when you put your foot down, it's a very fast response, which I'll show you when we get to Ladies Mile. So before I get on to a little bit more about speed, it is probably worth talking about the engines. Now the old version of the Vito used to have a 2.1 litre diesel engine and that engine has been around for a very long time and, and was often described as hard working. Whereas the new version of the Mercedes-Benz Vito, in the rear wheel drive versions of this vehicle, you get the brand new 2 litre diesel engine. And I've got to say, one of the first things I noticed about this new engine is that it is a lot quieter than the old 2.1 litre diesels. Seriously, this new 2 litre is nice and quiet. And again, when I talk about premium, when we talk about it in terms of vans, what you're actually looking for is just something that this vehicle does that others don't. Wind noise is quite prevalent in other vehicles that you wouldn't necessarily term as premium. Whereas in the front of the Mercedes-Benz Vito, there's barely any wind noise at all. And thanks to that quieter engine, I'm just talking to you at a normal level of voice. I'm not having to shout like I do sometimes when I'm driving an electric van. Now, speaking of electric, the Mercedes-Benz Vito is also available in an electric version, which we have reviewed already. I'm going to stick the link up here. The eVito's electric motor does a very good job of emulating the speed and power that I'm experiencing in this 116 engine model. Power is at my foot tip. Every time I push down an accelerator, there's a nice surge and I can feel the gearbox already beginning to prepare that next gear for me, depending on what the situation will arise to. And I think what actually that means is that Mercedes have done a very good job in making sure that the electric version of this van feels like the diesel version of this van. The point is that I think Mercedes have actually done a very good job in making their electric version of the Vito feel like driving the diesel version of the Vito. And as we get closer to Ladies Mile, which is just around the corner and is that big long stretch of mile long road that I like to open these vehicles up on, I think we're going to see something very nice. So when I put my foot down in the e Vito, well of course it's an electric powertrain so the surge of speed was almost instantaneous. But let's see what happens when I put my foot down in the diesel version with this automatic gearbox, let's see how it goes. Okay, so we're just rounding the corner onto Ladies Mile. Hopefully it will be nice and clear. It looks nice and clear. Let's go. Foot right to the floor. Excellent surging gear changes there from the gearbox. Handles it fantastically and I'm up to 60 in what felt like a heartbeat. Absolutely wonderful. Now look, Mercedes-Benz know how to make sports cars. And I tell you what, the Mercedes-Benz Vito, I mean, it really does. I mean, with this, with this gearbox and this engine, this new engine, I mean, this feels like a sports van. Absolutely fantastic. And that's the point. When I say that a facelift has to make meaningful improvements, I think they've made the absolute right choice to retire the 2.1 litre diesels. Look, as I said, they're long-standing, they're hard-working, they've been around for what seems like ages. It was about time, and that's not to say that they were bad, but the improvements that I'm seeing from this new 2-litre, just from how fun it is to drive this van, oh, they've absolutely made the right choice. Absolutely killer. I have to say as well that my fuel consumption is pretty damn good. Now, in the brochures, the 116 model 
quotes 42 to 45 or 47 if my memory serves. Now I'm actually getting just under that because I'm doing a lot of country road driving, a lot of corners, a lot of speeding up and slowing down. So I'm getting just around 39 to 40. But when I put my foot down on the accelerator and, it, and the gears stabilize, I hit around 43 miles per gallon, which is absolutely damn good for an engine of this size and a vehicle of this size. Really, really compelling. And it just handles everything so nicely corners are easy. I don't feel any tug on the outside of the vehicle when I go around a corner. It doesn't even feel like it's slanting over too much. And you know what the best bit about this is? While I'm driving around and taking corners in a van that is driving like a sports car with the alloy wheels and the shiny silver exterior, I look like I'm driving something sporty too. Brilliant. So there we go, a nice little drive out in the Mercedes-Benz Vito that actually made me feel like the facelift actually offers something new. You know, this isn't just chrome detailing. That new engine, I think, is the beating heart of this facelift, and Mercedes-Benz deserve a pat on the back for creating a brand new engine that delivers, well, everything you'd expect from a Mercedes-Benz. You know, sporty looks are one thing, but sporty handling? Well, that's tough to get in a van, especially a van of this size. But you know what, Mercedes-Benz absolutely nailed it. So, how do we finish this one? Well, if you are looking for a premium medium van, does it get more premium than this badge? Probably not. Now look, it has had a facelift, but a facelift is only impactful when it makes real changes. And in my opinion, the Mercedes-Benz Vito needed these changes. The looks are great, but what really makes the difference is the new engines and the new cabin. That is what a facelift should be about. So if you are looking for a premium van, the Mercedes-Benz Vito is definitely the one for you. Job done.